Truthful actions are actions directed towards achieving a goal. They are also a reaction to the things, circumstances, events, people and situations around you. To invest the scene, your partners and the objects around you with reality, he says, we have to pull a lever in ourselves. We place ourselves in the fiction, we don't hold the fiction in our imagination. In other words, we endow people around you in the scene with the feelings that you would have in the character's situation. It's not important, Stanislavski says, whether Othello's dagger is real or whether it's a prop. What is important is whether he invests the objects and the people around him with reality. Thus, Stanislavski steers us towards the truth of relationships and feelings within the fiction. Justify our actions by investing in a series of personal ifs in relation to the character and the given circumstances. The task is to have a proportion of one's awareness believing the words, the deeds and the actions of those around you, letting them affect you and allowing yourself to justify them and respond accordingly. And we enable the others to affect us and then we behave truthfully. We are then in a state of reacting. If emotion comes in the scene, it should surprise you. Now remember, the golden rule for an actor is to not ask how to do or say something, but why you do and say something. The more wise you ask of any given moment, the more likely you're going to mine into something golden. So every moment of performance must be endorsed by a belief in the truth of the feelings being experienced and in the truth of the action taking place. The truth and belief of children at play is absolutely vital to this process. If we're too scared of being untruthful, we fall into over-carefulness. John Cleese, when he just talks about uh, creativity, talks about the closed state, a state of control, a state of panic, of holding. You need the openness of a child, you need the playfulness, you need the space to make mistakes and to appear truthful and natural in a relaxed, imaginative way. We'll need to mix our truth with a salt of theatrical technique, stage and camera craft and tricks of the voice to make it clear. Your judge is your partner, your fellow actor. If you oblige them to believe in the truth of your feelings and there's communication, then that means you've achieved your creative goal. If you watch a movie or, or a play where a really great actor who's absolutely immersed in the work is working, you'll see that anybody who interacts with them are affected by the belief of that performer. So your belief has an impact on your partner, your partner's belief has an impact on you, and then we have a reciprocal process. It is your mutual duty to provoke each other, to aid your partner in his or her journey towards truth. The easiest way to stimulate this process is through the body, through the tiniest, simplest physical action. And this is essentially the basis of Uta Hagen's object exercises. She encourages students to work with small, detailed physical scores, searching for a ticket in a bag, ironing shirts, um, counting money, etc., answering the phone, making the bed, Focus on the detail. Focus on the detail. Really break down the action to tiny pieces and then add new given circumstances. If you can't open a door convincingly, how can you expect to play the rest of the scene? Look at the physical actions and really invest in those. So much emerges out of that. You'll be absolutely um, gobsmacked. You'll suddenly find that everything you're doing becomes more truthful, comes to life. So searching for a ticket properly, while the train is about to leave, you need your ticket, you need to get on the train, that will change the energy of the scene. And if it's the last train out of a war zone, then the energy of the scene will change again. Focus not on the war, but on the laborious detail of the physical action. Don't play the obstacle, play the action. And from that, the scene starts to take on a life of its own. A whole string of such acts will reinforce and support each other. This string of tasks and actions is your physical and inner score. He notes that Lady Macbeth's greatest moment, perhaps, is based around washing drips of blood from her hands. Unless she's 100% 
involved in washing the blood from her hands and washing the implications from her mind and her conscience, then the scene will not work. Just playing horror or guilt while engaged in the business of washing your hands won't cut the mustard. Quietly focusing on actually washing can create a mesmerizing moment. Great tragic moments add up to a series of small practical tasks. So we're recalling bits, tasks, given circumstances, magic if and all the different things we've been looking at so far as they start to come together in one process. He now talks about the logic and sequence of physical actions and this is automatic in life. We uh, lift the cup and then we drink but when you're suddenly performing on stage you can walk into furniture, drop things. What we have to do is almost relearn the chronological detailed order of uh, a small series of tasks and then we can play them in a variety of ways. In life we do the ironing whatever it is, while we're having the argument, the way that we iron changes, the way we take off the coat to leave. So we have to be fluid with the physical action so the text can just float over the top. There is of course a case for stillness. Stillness is an active decision, a decision to be still. Thus each sequence of physical actions is rehearsed in detailed mime many times. We split it up into a series of little units. Um, Open the coat, put the hand in the sleeve, pull the coat over the shoulder, do everything a hundred times over. This enables the score to become embedded in the body. When it's played with truth and belief, it'll change organically. If you're putting on your coat and saying, I'm leaving you goodbye, I've had enough, you're not getting caught up in the coat. You can put on the coat to show them something. Putting on the coat, which is an activity, suddenly becomes an action. Having created a logical sequence of physical actions, we are aware, if we're paying attention, that another line is being created inside uh, to parallel it. So we have maybe subtext, our inner thoughts, our own internal monologue. Beware of making lies a habit on stage. Do not allow bad seeds to put out roots to choke you in front of the camera. Tear them out. If you're not ruthless with these, he says, other weeds will grow and choke the essential shoots of truth within you. That's belief and a sense of truth. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the videos, please uh, let me know. And um, it's been quite a large gap between this one and the previous one because I've been very busy. I'm gonna produce a few more over the next few months, so uh, I'll continue with the series. Um, and your feedback is most welcome. Thank you very much. See you again. Bye.